Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to worship this day. I hope that you are able to receive the gift of this worship service with good health and certainly with the love of God in Christ dwelling within your spirit. You'll notice that we are not in the sanctuary, or at least the sanctuary that has been built specifically for that purpose. We are instead in the Sunday school room known as the fish tank room at East Church celebrating children's Sabbath. It seemed to be most appropriate, appropriate that we worship here today as we celebrate the children and pray for their well-being, their future. No matter who you are or where you are, dear friends, you are welcome. We are together as we worship God in Christ. Let us pray. Gather us up today, O God, into your loving presence so that as we worship, we will be inspired and engaged. Gather our hearts, O God, knitting us together across difference or division to live with your compassion. Gather our minds, O God, from distractions and distance to focus on you and your children. Gather our wills, O God, to be strong and courageous in the pursuit of your justice. By the power of your Holy Spirit, make us one in heart, mind, and spirit as we worship you on this children's Sabbath day. With the prayer Christ taught, we say, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. again, chances are we're going to be wearing our masks, and we've decided that it might be kind of a cool idea to learn how to pass the piece in sign language. I'm going to teach you that. This is a sign for peace. Be with you. You could do it one of two ways, be with you or be with you. The other person will respond with and also with you, also with you. So in sanctuary, when we're going to be passing the piece, peace, be with you. The other person would respond with, and also with you. Good morning. Today, we are taking a break from our Faith Practices curriculum to focus on the children's Sabbath celebrations happening all around. 
East Church has chosen this year, during Children's Sabbath, to support the Children's Defense Fund and their freedom schools through children's books that inspire. Pastor David has generously bought two books from the Children's Defense Fund website and donated them to our East Church Library. I have encouraged the Sunday Schoolers to do the same. Ways that you, the congregation, can support our efforts is by donating to the Children's Defense Fund, buying one of their children's books that inspire, or participating in a Drop Everything and Read this Wednesday night at 6 p.m. East Church's Drop Everything and Read will be to raise awareness for the Children's Defense Fund and everything that they do. A Drop Everything and Read is exactly what it sounds like. At 6 p.m. on Wednesday, I want you and your families to drop whatever you are doing and read. Make sure to take pictures of you reading and post them to social media or email them to the church. We want to help the CDF and their freedom schools by raising awareness through social media and our fundraising efforts. If you would like more information on the CDF, I invite you to go to their website and explore. If you would like to buy a book to enlarge and diversify East Church's library, I invite you to do that as well. Don't forget to look into the CDF, and I hope to see some pictures of you reading on Wednesday night.
you know, this weekend we are participating in Children's Sabbath celebrations. Right now, I'm going to read one of the children's books to inspire that Pastor David bought from the CDF and donated to East Church. After, I'm going to share a prayer. Our book today is called Honey, I Love, written by Eloise Greenfield and illustrated by Jan Spivy Gilchrist. I love, I love a lot of things, a whole lot of things, like my cousin comes to visit and you know he's from the South because every word he says just kind of slides out of his mouth. I like the way he whistles and I like the way he walks, but honey, let me tell you that I love the way he talks. I love the way my cousin talks and The day is hot and icky, and the sun sticks to my skin. Mr. Davis turns, up, turns the hose on, everybody jumps right in. The water stings my stomach, and I feel so nice and cool. Honey, let me tell you that I love a flying pool. I love to feel a flying pool, and... Renee comes out to play and brings her doll without a dress. I make a dress with paper, and that doll sure looks a mess. We laugh so loud and long and hard, the doll falls to the ground. Honey, let, let me tell you that I love the laughing sound. I love to make the laughing sound. And... My uncle's car is crowded, and there's lots of food to eat. We're going down the country where the church folks like to meet. I'm looking out the window at the cows and trees outside. Honey, let me tell you that I love to take a ride. I love to take a family ride and... My mom is on the sofa sewing buttons on my coat. I go and sit beside her. I'm through playing with my boat. I hold her arm and kiss it because it feels so soft and warm. Honey, let me tell you that I love my mama's arm. I love to kiss my mama's arm and... It's not so late at night, but still I'm lying in my bed. I guess I need my rest. At least, that's what my mama said. She told me not to cry, because she don't want to hear a peep. Honey, let me tell you, I don't love to go to sleep. I do not love to go to sleep. But I love, I love a lot of things, a whole lot of things. And honey, I love me too. Our scripture lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen 
shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Here ends the reading from Isaiah. Dear friends, may we be in prayer. Loving God, touch us today, be with us today, help us to become children of wonder once again in your spirit, in hope and dream and in love. Amen. Friends, over the two years I've been your interim minister, I've learned that there are a number of rooms here at East with special or in-house names. For example, Second Space, that makes some sense as a name for the Auxiliary Fellowship Hall at the south end of the church. Then the Sunshine Room, <laughs> that's a facetious name for that very dark room in the basement underneath Christ Chapel. But why is this great Sunday School classroom called the Fish Tank Room? It may be that the name Fish Tank Room stuck just because there's been one here for many years, but, but why not instead a biblically inspired name? Well, as I ponder to that, perhaps the Fish Tank Room makes a point. In fact, consider that by listening for a moment to the Fish Tank. The tank makes a gentle sound, wouldn't you agree? It inspires comfort and peace, safety and nurture, and an environment just right for a Sunday school, or for the whole church too. Church and, and church school ought to be safe zones where people experience peace and are free to be and, and willing to love one another and to understand that this is what expresses and embodies the character of God. In times like this, such sacred environments are especially important. Yet spaces like the fish tank room are not available. That's hard when the many disruptions caused by the coronavirus continue. Plus, few of us are immune from the civil strife that is making this political season unparalleled, unparalleled in hostility. And the reasons these times are hard also relate to why the Children's Defense Fund has asked the church to call today Children's Sabbath, to draw attention to the fact that one out of every six children in the United States lives in poverty and may also be hungry or have no insurance for health care or are in danger of homelessness. When we open the doors of East Church again. How can we be of service to honor the timeless hope as it was profoundly articulated by the prophet Isaiah so long ago that in the days to come people will not labor in vain nor bear children for calamity because they will be blessed by the Lord. The book of Isaiah is about a particular and disastrous period in Israel's history. Its saga covers at least a 75 year period between 600 and 500 BC, during which time the nation was routed in war with Babylon, after which Israel's people were expelled and enslaved, and just before 60 years later, they were able to come home again. Isaiah divides into three parts to speak spiritually to each segment of that grave time. Isaiah, part one, comes just before the fall of Jerusalem and the prophet's message was accusatory. Almost proverbially, Isaiah, Isaiah proclaimed, prepare to meet your doom. The disaster to come was their fault. 
because Israel's people had lost faith and had sinned grievously, they would be defeated and exiled. When Isaiah part two was shared some 30 years later, the tone was different. That was in the midst of the exile and Isaiah lifted up prayers filled with intercessions, not more doom and gloom and the prophet began raising hopes and promising that God's punishment would not last forever. And then after many more years, Isaiah part three was written and it declared that the refugees were finally going to go home. God had persuaded the king of Persia to end Babylon's rule and to let the people of Israel go home. Even while the word spread like wildfire and celebrations began and the old prayers were recited and belongings were packed. The prophet preached a deeper message with a higher calling for the new Israel that was to be. That word as it came from God called on them not to just think about getting back to the way things were, but instead to truly seek a real new normal not just to worry about what they might find back in Israel or how they could get the economy going again, but to believe that this was their chance to be better, better people. This time we can be better, declared Isaiah. This time we can rebuild with tender love and great mercy and the kindness of justice. So this time we will not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. This time, Isaiah said, with God we can claim the vision that God has long held out for us. That is to build a society that offers comfort to the afflicted, peace for all, safety and nurture, no matter who one is or where they are on life's journey. Let us not just think about the goal of being great, but pass the test of character, faithfulness, and compassion. That is what makes Israel a chosen people. Dear friends, in the midst of these times and with the challenges facing us today, I ask you this, which of the three Isaiahs do you think is the prophetic word for our times? Is it the Isaiah of hellfire and brimstone who called out sin and prophesied punishment? Is it the pietistic Isaiah lamenting Israel's wrongs, but praying for forgiveness and hoping that God's punishment wouldn't last forever? Or is it the Isaiah who strove to lead the people back home and to live into their new normal with a moral vision, a vision of renewal founded on greater faithfulness? If I would answer that question for myself, and commend to you the new normal for which I pray for. It is that God's people would reach high and strive hard for the moral vision that will do wonders for making this world fit for children. To aim high, not low, and higher again so that our success is measured by the old, old biblical standard for peace and welfare that no more, more shall there be in this world an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person that does not live out a lifetime, that neither we labor in vain nor bear children for calamity. For then, then we shall be working along God who wants to create a new heaven and a new earth. In the spirit of Christ, amen.
especially so in prayer at this time in our worship. As always, I invite you to pray for those who you are closest with and, and those whom you know and love who are in need of prayer. And also for this community, this world that is struggling, struggling with the coronavirus. For the children in this community and this world who struggle with poverty and with disadvantage. We pray that those who have conspire to kidnap a governor would be brought to justice and that our community and our state would be safe for all. We pray for these elections soon to come that each person may be able to vote their choice and do so freely and safely. These and all the prayers we raise in the spirit of Christ, let us pray. Loving God, we witness your will being done when there is compassion for all, when there is courage to do what is right for the greater good, when we, each of us, can live out what we truly have faith to say is God's love and truth is made known to us in Christ. Oh well, God, it is so good to say that you are known even in this time when there is also illness and where there is also fractionalism, when there is also deep need among people. May we be your people. May we be your servants. May we be among those who make this world safe for the children and for all people. We ask, oh God, that you would touch us, that you would not only make us worthy for that task, but that you would touch us with your love to say that we are worthy because and only because we are your children. Touch us, oh God, and reassure us of that worth. Touch us, O oh God, and bring to us your grace that is a forgiveness for the wrongs we have done, that is an empowerment to do what is right, and that is simply a wondrous wholeness that lets us know that we are secure no matter what. Touch us, O oh God, in the ways we need it most. Touch us, O oh God, to free us. Touch us, O oh God, in the spirit of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who is love incarnate, and who is our friend, our guide, our savior. Amen. it is our faith that will make us well and with our faithfulness we can set this world right so go with god and go in peace go in peace and we shall go with god amen <laughs>